for some, trying to catch a fish only to release it again provides such a soul-enriching experience that they are willing to travel from all over the world just to throw feathers into the water for a chance encounter with one of these beautiful creatures. I made my way to where the river meanders, forming buckets, tailouts, and opportunity for those seeking the catch and release experience. Catch and release is something that I believe has been used quite successfully on a broad range of species and fisheries throughout the world to enable anglers to still go fishing while having the least possible impact on fish stocks. You have to you know, acknowledge that there is a catch and release mortality. Uh, the best science of the day will tell you that if you do everything right, you're probably going to be sitting somewhere around 5%. This means that one out of every 20 fish you land is, is probably not going to make it. And in some cases, that number could be a lot worse. Uh, I think that as anglers, the best thing we can do to minimize our impact, quite simply, is to catch less fish. If things are so bad that we can't kill them, maybe we shouldn't fish at all. So essentially, we want to remove ourselves from the water. Well, at the end of the day, if, if we can find ways to still enjoy these places and be connected to them, then we're going to be the champions of those places over time. And, and the real danger is, if people stop going fishing because they can't kill fish, then, then who's going to care one or two generations removed if the fish are still there? Do I look down on people who harvest fish where it's legally allowed? So if you know if, if you want to keep a coho when you no fish is catching your own food, that's great. That's you know that's that was the, the start of the experience for me. Let's say we have a lodge of 15, 20 people, and let's say we were a kill lodge. Okay, so that means on a weekly basis we're packing up a lot of fish, salmon. Uh, the guest's focus then is on the box. The box is the box of dead fish. You know, how was your trip? My box is half full. Oh, my box is full. It was a great trip. You take the box away and you just catch and release by default. Now it's how was your day? What did you see? Did you have a bite? Did you like the water you fished? Did you see a wolf? Yeah, we saw a wolf. We saw an eagle. You know, whatever it was, how was your casting? Casting was good. The focus is not on the box. Over time, we're going to find other ways that we can minimize our impact and preserve our access so we can still go fishing. And in periods of low abundance, so when you don't have a lot of fish, I think that this becomes especially important. If one out of 20 fish caught is, is not going to make it, then how do we make sure that we're not you know, leaving a trail of dead fish behind us? Well, don't catch too many of them. That's, that's how it goes, but still enjoy your, your time on the water. It's not that I'm pr not proud to be a fish guide. It's just, it's just that, yeah, I would say that I don't, I try not to identify solely as anything. Um, my relationship with the fish up here is, is, you know, multifaceted, like everybody's relationship with the fish. If you want to talk about fisheries, fisheries is like, or the plight of fish, that's just death by a thousand cuts, really, isn't it? Because you've got a million different groups of people all choosing to identify as individual groups of people. In which case, you get, you get the same old story we get in so much of our life, an us and them conversation, which causes a ton, it inherently causes a ton of divide. And it's very hard to get over. And it's very easy to harbor resentment if you've chosen a side like that. Nobody wants to give up what they've got. And everybody has a story and everybody has a culture. Like, you know, the commercial guys on the coast, they have a culture, they have a, a story, they have history, they have a family history, they have a economic history, they have a community history, and they don't want to give that up. Who can blame them? Um, you know, First Nations, same story, culture, family history, blah, blah, blah. Anglers, sport anglers, that's undeniably the same. You know, you, you can break it down simply, they have a history here with the fish, there's connections and yada yada yada, and they don't want to give up opportunity. But um, that has nothing to do with fish. Fish do not care what your story is 
when you kill them. Or pull them around. Whatever. Like it's the fish do not care. So, at, you know, at that point, you kind of have to break it down to like, okay, well, how much validity do we give to people's stories and these camps of people that have quote unquote interest? If you're non subscribed and you're willing to go to the table and be truthful, then you can stand up and go, hey, I had a hand in that. And nobody's perfect, and you can't hate everybody for having a history or leaning on a history. It's what we're taught. But moving forward, people just need to get out of camps, get out of I'm this. You're not that. You're just you. And every day when you wake up in the morning, you have the opportunity to take the information that's come your way and filter it through like a logical perspective of the fish.